talk about mental health a lot and I'm not going to stop so if you're not interested in this please click away hello friends I'm just here to make a quick video today and it's just to help me maybe I'll be the only one that watches it back but Maybe someone else will watch it and go, hey, that helped. <laughs> so I just want to talk about five realizations that I have had in the last two years since my mental breakdown, which you can read about below in my blog. Okay, so I'm going to start with number one. The aches and pains that you're feeling from your mental illness, whether that be stomach ache, headache, or just emotional pain. It's real. As I thought for a while I was going insane because I went to so many doctors for physical ailments. And it all turned out to be from just being an anxious little bunny bun. bun, bun, bun. Your body is actually manifesting these pains. So yeah, don't feel like you have to justify the fact that you're actually in pain because you are. If it's a door. Number two for me is writing. And again, something I talk about all the time is writing because that's what I am. I'm a writer. I feel like words are magic. So I keep a journal. It's not, you know, for other people to see it's just for me because sometimes I can go back and look at when I felt really bad you know like those those moments of despair it's like chaotic and frightening and sad and then I can also go when I feel like that and look at the times when I feel really good and positive and happy and I realize that you know life can feel good, life does feel good, and I'm not insane because I'm not making myself feel like this. My, my body is just, no, no, my brain is betraying me. <laughs> Damn you brain, thought we were friends. Number three is if you want a job that makes you feel good or that, you know, you want to make money, so you want to have a good job like that, or you just want to make it, it doesn't matter, that is not selfish, 100% not selfish, not said enough. Our, our parents' generation and, you know, generations before had the unlucky and unfortunate, you know, circumstances where they couldn't. They had to just take a job and be happy about it so that they could feed themselves and their family. And not having a job was seen as, you know, shameful where now it's a little different i'm not saying that you know you should try and have a vocation you should just try and have something that's for you so you can feel like you're making a positive impact on but it's okay for you to have a job or for you to want a job that you enjoy that is not selfish 100 uh, percent it's not millennial snowflakes saying i don't want to work as a lawyer because my mom told me that's a good job to get no you 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 want to be a photographer you be a photographer but remember you have to work really hard that is just that's another thing as well you know don't forget about that you're not entitled to the, the the nice lovely job you have to work really hard for it so number four and this this one this one was the hardest one for me and i still deal with it a lot because i don't know you know, growing up, I, I always wanted people to like me. I wanted to be the happy-go-lucky child. I wanted to be the smiley one, the kind one. And not everyone is going to like you. And that's okay, Jen. You feel like, oh, that, you know, that person doesn't get what I'm about or they perceive me differently than I actually know I am and, you know, just, like do not waste your time with that right whether it be a complete stranger or someone very close to you you cannot change their perception because you're fighting your battle 
but they're finding theirs too. Remember that, that's so important. You'll waste so much of your time and energy because the only person that you can change is yourself. Let's say that again later for the people in the back. <laughs> Number five ooh, is something I learned from my lovely counselor. She said that when I talk about other people, I'm very kind and open and forgiving and then I talk about myself and you see a lot of anger and bitterness towards myself and what I've had to learn the hard way, it's very difficult, is that you have to talk to yourself the way you would talk to a loved one. You have to talk to yourself like you're talking to your best friend, to your mother, to your partner. You deserve to be kind to yourself. Being a human being is hard, okay? Like, you could have been a cat. Cats have a fucking great life. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Beeping. Sorry, I'm Irish, a curse, okay? Get over it. Your dialogue with yourself is, is so important because I find the more that I forgave myself for things that I had no control over, where I didn't get angry with myself for being sad, for being depressed, for being anxious, when I processed my feelings more efficiently, I found that I didn't sweat the little things anymore. You know, it's, it's okay to be hurt on yourself if you're procrastinating and you, you, you were supposed to write a paper three weeks ago and it's due tomorrow and I've been there. I was very depressed last week for a number of reasons. And at times I said things about myself to myself that I would never say to my worst enemy. I'm not perfect, I still do it, but I think it's important for us as human beings to realize you can be nice to yourself and you can be your own best friend and you can treat yourself, okay? Have a bubble bath, have a glass of wine, have that cupcake. We're all just meat skeletons running around on a floating ball of rock in infinite space and wow okay anyway I want to thank you all for watching for supporting me those coming from my blog thank you so much those from my youtube channel thank you so much you know if you want to cross pollinate please feel free if you want to share this with your friends who are depressed or anxious or have any other mental illnesses or other illnesses you know like I mean chronic illnesses are they come in all shapes and horrific sizes. Um, and please feel free to subscribe because I do make fun content too. <laughs> and let me know about realizations you had in the comments below of how you felt after dealing with your mental illness. Okay, thank you so much. I love you guys. Bye.